Hello, I dear Sky. I'm going into game dev, and I need only your most novel ideas. Is this what we're doing? You've had your say, I dear Sky, but I'll have mine. You're a rascal. Alright, alright, I'll give you your damn. Actually, you know what? Give a man an idea, he'll make games for a day. But teach a man to generate ideas, and he'll make games for one and a half days at least. There is a story about legendary Greek philosopher, niche religious figure, and renowned seller of potions, Charles Darwin. And the story is that he as a boy would go into the wilderness in what has now become Greater Tokyo and catch bugs. This childhood hobby later inspired the esteemed Darwin to make a video game on the matter. And that video game's name, Albert Einstein, uh, Pokemon. He made Pokemon. From this story, one can extract a lesson, a hint, a tip, a method for generating ideas for things. The way is simply to take something from one context, in this case nature, and transplant it into another context, here video game. In this case, I gazed upon Potion Seller, the universally loved, award-winning short film by the Alfred Hitchcock of the 21st century, beloved and renowned director of many magnum opera, he who brings gifts to good children in late September, Justin Kuritsky's. And so said I to myself, I should make a game of that. And later said I to myself, this is a good idea for that conversation simulating thing I've been wanting to do. There are more on that later. Another way to generate ideas, you could also spot voids in the landscape of media. Games that could exist, but don't for some reason. One way to identify such voids is to look at things on one of many axes. All games arranged according to, for instance, openness or playtime. Some games are very short and take only 90 minutes to win, like The Beginner's Guide. Some games are too long for you, traveller, like Persona 5. And of course there are middling examples like Hollow Knight, Dark Souls, Minecraft. From this perspective, a question is born. What happens if you take this to its extreme? How short could you make a game while still making it, you know, a proper game? One hour? Thirty minutes? Two minutes? Thirty seconds? Super Hexagon could be beaten in about six minutes. How long can you make a game? Is a thousand hour game feasible? A game that takes a lifetime to complete? A game that has to be completed by a family over many generations? You cannot handle my longest game. There are not many games of these two extreme lengths. The area is mostly void of examples. It would be interesting to start making a game with the intention that it will only take 30 seconds to beat. You can take any aspect of a game, much like length, and stretch it to either extreme to find interesting ideas. Now, ideas that are generated from these kind of methods are often very novel and ill before seen, and it is the novelty that is optimized for here. There's no guarantee, however, that these ideas will be any good. It's up to the user to pick and choose which ideas are worth pursuing and to pursue them well. Some will be dead on arrival. Some will be good almost no matter what. Most will be good or bad, depending on execution. The dialogue for the potion seller is uh, procedurally generated, one could say. But the way in which it is generated is so needlessly convoluted as to resemble the infamous Gordian knot. The reason I've made the dialogue generation in such a Byzantine manner is for the purpose of exploring one of these voids. A big one. So there are various degrees, an axis, if you will, of how detailed the simulations are in game battles. You have choose-your-own-adventure esque things like Telltale's games with no simulation, everything written by the authors, then you have full simulations, like Dwarf Fortress. Most games fall closer to the latter end, simulating the path of each bullet and the arc of each blade. Which raises the question, what if you apply this simulation axis to dialogue? What you find is that in almost every game, and indeed almost all media, the dialogue is not in any way generated by a simulation. Every damn word is written by the author. It is therefore my god-given duty to make a game where the dialogue is a result of a simulation. And how'd that work out for you? I mean, I did it, but it's not really 
complete or even good, the potion seller has a list of concepts that he knows of, each with a list of traits. For instance, the potion seller thinks that the traveller, you, have a strength trait that is low, and that the strongest potion has a strength trait that is very high. It is by comparing these two that he decides not to sell you his strongest potion, and then he constructs a valid English sentence telling you this fact. Simulatedness is a scale, though, an axis. What might have been better, and what is more relevant to a wider selection of games, is to make a less complex but more complete system, replacing words and phrases, for instance, based on the character's opinion of you. Alternatively, you could add or remove some fucking expletives from the dialogue, depending on the current mood of whoever's speaking. Of course, you could also go more complex, if you dare, the most extreme version being just simulating a whole human brain. But of course, that's going to be a couple of months before someone mods Godot to facilitate that. You speak to the potion seller via this bullet hell interface. You go to the edge of the wheel to speak in one of four aggressiveness levels. Collecting the red bubbles increases the success of your speech. Hitting the white spikes decreases its success. The potion seller's opinion of you will change based on how successful your speech was. If you attempt to speak more assertively, then he will change his opinion more. It's like placing a larger bet. Lamentably, the bullet elements are quite simple. Merely some bullets floating around and not really doing much. Unlimited in time and gusto, I'd have done much more. Also note how the four options are of the same difficulty. Mere days before the month's end, I was wrangling with trying to randomly generate bullet patterns, and enough time to have different patterns in the four quadrants simply did not exist. Right, next time I'm making a normal game instead of this bullshit. Bye! Whee!